when we give a presentation, we often use a visual communication that makes it hard to distinguish what matters from irrelevant noise. No more. Welcome to the first out of two videos on how to adjust signal and noise using data visualization and slide design. Welcome to Simple Points. Great data visualization grabs the viewer's attention, makes them understand and remember your take home message. How can we achieve this? I like to boil it down to the relationship between signal and noise. And to adjust the signal to noise ratio, we need the signal to noise machine. This machine has two control panels, one controller for noise on the left hand side and a controller for the signal on the right hand side. Signal is what we want to communicate. Noise, on the other hand, is stuff that is there, uh, but it's not really part of our communication intention. These two controllers can be independently adjusted. Okay, let me demonstrate what I mean by this. I will be using a made up data set for demonstration purposes. Imagine we asked people to rate different types of pizza on a scale from zero to 100. Zero corresponds to ugh, and 100 corresponds to you know, singing songs about how yummy the pizza is, okay? Now we let people rate different toppings, for example, pepperoni, mushroom or spinach, and we collect data from four different countries. Let's all hope I will be able to teach you something about data visualization design with a made up pizza um, data set. One advantage of that is that all of you guys at home, you're domain experts on the topic. So the content itself comes easy to you. Okay, so let us assume your idea, your big message, your communication intention is pepperoni pizza is the best, okay? You don't have to agree with this now, but let's just assume that's the message. A simple message, and to be honest, not that far off the things that we often talk about in science. We often run studies with an intervention and a control. We compare the two groups and we make actually a big fuss about when the treatment group is different from the control group, right? This is what you often see in scientific journals or on conferences, right? You can't read anything because the font's too small. There are tons of information all over the place and you don't even know where to look, where to start even. In conference presentation, you get only a very short moment to digest this information before the presenter moves on to the next slide. This plot, relative to its communicative intention, is pure noise and very little signal. So both noise and signal levels are in the red region right now. Not good. What I want to do with you guys now is the following. I want to work on the signal to noise ratio. I want to step by step remove design elements that are noise. That means they do not contribute to the narrative. And then we will ramp up those design elements that are signal. That means they are the core elements to communicate the narrative. All right. First of all, the graph shows four different panels for the different countries. Remember, we collected pizza ratings in different countries. You wouldn't know that, of course, if you look at this plot, because the font is too small for you to even read. We will get back to that issue soon. But for now, indulge me. Pepperoni pizza is the best. That is your message. This idea says nothing about differences across countries. It's simply not part of the communicative intention. So having different panels is noise. It's not only irrelevant, it also makes retrieving a signal of the plot, the message, more difficult. So let's get rid of it. Uh -huh. Somewhat better, right? Next step. There's a legend in the plot. It's so tiny you can't even see it, but it doesn't really matter because a legend in, in fact here is redundant. The difference between the three different pizza toppings is encoded on the x-axis already and redundant information can be considered noise. So we can safely get rid of it without losing much signal. Next, we get rid of the gray background and the grid lines. The gray background actually reduces the contrast against which the colored elements are perceived, making them less salient, they pop less. Grid lines are generally not a bad thing, but our narrative is interested in expressing relative values, not absolute ones. So it's not really about the actual ratings that the different pizzas receive. It is about the fact that pepperoni pizza is rated higher than other toppings. Again, let's remove these elements. Now we're getting somewhere. The plots you see here are a combination of box plots and the raw data points superimposed on top of each other. These plots intend to communicate data distributions. Again, to communicate the simple idea of pepperoni is the best, we don't necessarily need the data distributions. A summary representation might be sufficient. For those of you um, out there, and there might be a bunch of you, 
who are skeptic at this point about plots that show simple summary statistics, check out my um, presentation on clear and credible data visualization where I actually talk about this issue. Next, we can actually question the plot type in the first place. Why using box plots? Box plots show several properties of the actual data distribution, including the quartiles and the range of values. These aspects of the distribution, again, are not relevant for the message per se. So we could decide to use a more simple graphical representation that summarizes the data even more. And the bar plot is a fine choice if we want to communicate mean value differences. So here we are. We removed a bunch of noise from our initial plot by removing facets, removing the legend, removing the background color, removing grid lines, and we finally changed the plot type to a bar plot. Empirical evidence suggests that data visualization that has low levels of noise are not cluttered. These are perceived as clearer, but also as more professional and more aesthetic. But the plot as it is right now is not clear. We removed all the noise, but the signal is still really low. So next we will ramp up the signal step by step. Here we go. We first of all increase the font. So finally, the text is actually readable. That gives us a huge boost of signal. We also removed the y-axis and simply printed the mean values on top of the bars. They are clearly visible at the center of the plot. And this does actually a lot of things at once. It encodes absolute values clearly, unambiguously, and it focuses all relevant information in one and the same area of the plot. We don't have to jump around between axes anymore to integrate information, it's all right there. In the next step, we can scale the y-axis by decreasing its maximum. And this leads to a visually more salient difference between the different bars, increasing the distance between pepperoni and the rest. Note that when we use bar plots, we should not adjust the minimum. The bars should always be grounded at zero. But you might notice something that is, at this point, very unintuitive and actually challenging when trying to read this plot. The colors, right? They're not only meaningless, they are also contradicting the actual categories. The red color is much more suited for pepperoni and the green color is probably much more fitting for the artichoke topping, right? So let's use actually meaningful colors for these categories. Wow, we are getting somewhere here. Note that this is obviously not always possible with the colors since we're dealing with very abstract categories in our research, but it's always worth spending some time on thinking about color coding in advance. It's one of the most salient visual features of a graph and it can help to integrate information quickly. And as a final step, we can increase the contrast even more between relevant categories. The intended message here is pepperoni is the best. Or in other words, pepperoni is bigger, has been rated higher than everything else. So we could de-emphasize the other categories by, for example, a gray color to make the one bar that really matters pop and visually attract even more attention. And in a recent experimental study by Kira and Ayani et al., Strategies that use visual focus, such as we do here with color contrasts, were more than twice as likely to be recalled than non-focused alternatives. They really stick with our audience. Using large fonts, using strong color contrast that highlights the key category and rescaling the plot, we end up with a clean graph in a sense of clean of noise, which has high communicative value for our intention. Keep in mind that this example is manufactured to communicate one thing, Pepperoni is better than the other pizzas. If this is my intention, all my moves are justified. Obviously, this is not to say these moves are generalizable. And neither do I try to say that this last plot here is appropriate for all contexts. And I'm aware that there's a certain hesitancy to use bar plots in scientific contexts, and there are really good reasons for it. Again, check out my video on clear and credible data visualization. These examples today, they were merely intended to show you the logic behind modulating signal to noise and, and how far we can actually push it. Every step on the continuum might be justified by one reason or the other, but should always be an intentional decision we are actively making to get our point across.